So I'll, I'll show you like, so this is like the Stroop task uh, in BART. Um, and so, well, in BART and Qualtrics. And so basically I kind of edited this from the BART task. Um, and so all the, so these are just, these first two questions are just the instructions. Um, I actually figured out how to make like this blue font. You just have to like go up and do rich content editor or somewhere. Um, yeah, you can, you can like do rich content editor and make them, you know, different colored fonts for, so these are just like basic Qualtrics questions, just instructions. And then this is like where our task is. So it actually still has this balloon because it's from the, the BART task, but um, I just didn't, you know, remove it because it doesn't show up in our task. Um, but uh, there's basically like two, um, two sources of information. There's like an HTML file and then there's a JavaScript file. So the HT, they kind of work together like the JavaScript actually runs the study and then HTML just like um, uh, sets up like where stuff is going to go on the screen. So I don't really know HTML, uh, you know, very well at all. Uh, and so I just kind of, but I kind of like could figure out like what some of this stuff is doing. So if you click on, I figured out if you click on like the second one, um, this is how you can open up the HTML uh, editor. So I clicked on the second little dot here and then go to HTML view. <clears throat> and then it shows, um, this is like the HTML code. So what I'm gonna do just to make sure I have this uh, like save, say if my Qualtrics account gets shut down or something, um, I just want it saved in a local file. Um, I'm just, I'll just copy and paste this uh, into like a text file. And then like I have all of this and like I could, you know, email it to you or something. And, you know, you could just um, basically copy and paste this into a new um, uh, a Qualtrics uh, survey question. And then it would, you could like, you know, program a new experiment kind of starting with this HTML basically. Um, <clears throat> but if you go through it, like it kind of has like all of these things, like the, these are like um, different things that are called within the JavaScript file. So like, uh, next button round like round is has become kind of like the with the block like around and the BART task was when you pumped it until it exploded you know that was one round um, and then it has all these other things for like where different messages go um, I kind of played with some of this stuff a little bit just to see what it does but you know obviously if I was to really do this appropriately, I would like actually learn HTML um, instead of just figuring out, you know, what it does. Um, but, you know, that works a lot for programming uh, psych studies. So um, these are all like just different things, just saying like what the height of things, uh, things are, I guess, margin from the bottom, like, so I don't know exactly what that does. But these are all just kind of different things that are called um yeah and then these are things i actually had to add um these are i think button presses so i added like red blue green and yellow <clears throat> and so like press and go on and collect were like already buttons that people could select and those are kind of called from the javascript file and so um See, so yeah, it has like total term, total value, last value. All these are like point values um, in the original task. Present different stuff. Um, this is where, yeah, this is where I added red, blue, green, and yellow again. Uh, I think this brings up like the cursor. And then I guess uh, that's probably the color of the background. And then I added in these as well, like red, blue, green, hover. Uh, I don't know exactly what that does, but these were all buttons before. And so I just kind of, you know, copied the, uh, the same thing. And then, um, yeah, this is, so this is like going to the next round. 
go on. That's the end of most of these, but then, um, yeah, like I also added in all these button types up here. Uh, again, I don't know really what this code is doing, but I just followed the format for like press and collect. Um, and so there's different buttons for red, blue, green, and yellow. Um, and then this is just, yeah, different stuff. See, like, I don't know what div ID div is. Um, there's also some uh, stuff at the top, I think. Um, yeah, like the CSS stuff. I'm not really sure what that does, it, but it was in that original file I started from. So I just like kept it basically. Um, so that I'm going to go ahead and like save it, um, have it in another folder. Wait. So I'm going to save it as Stroop Ask uh, HTML dot HTML. Um, <clears throat> And so now I have like my own copy basically. So, so this is like the HTML part of it. Um, and it, you can, you know, you actually edit it in Qualtrics uh, by going to that view that we were just in HTML view. Um, and so this is how you would like actually edit it. If you wanted to say copy this survey and, and like start a new experiment and you know, you wanted to add new buttons like red, blue, green, or yellow, like I did, you can, you know, you could basically do that by just adding those. Um, I don't know, does that all make sense? Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's the HTML. And then this right here is the JavaScript. So this little thing, you can also go to it here, um, but this opens like the JavaScript uh, editor. And so um, this is like, this actually like runs the study and kind of just calls variables that were, were created uh, in HTML. Um, and so this editor right here, um, I had to use another editor for like testing something. So like when I was kind of working, you have to sometimes write kind of logic. So, so for example, this is still in here from the mixed gamble study. Um, but basically this right here, uh, was from when I had gone to this online editor and you go to, to JavaScript. Um, so this right here like allows you to kind of test JavaScript. And if there's an error, it'll show you like where there, there's an error. And so I, I'm sure uh, you've seen this similarly in that online Code Academy course. Um, yeah, let's see if it runs or if I need another variable. Yeah, so, um, so see it runs and like in the, it doesn't show up in like this editor within Qualtrics, but that's why I like using this online editor because it has a console. And so you can like log something to the console that you wanna like check to see what it is. And so like here, this is just saying from 10 to 40, um, go like increase gains by six. Um, and so this created like that new uh, mixed gamble and then do losses increment by three uh, from five to 20. Um, and so, so basically that, uh, like I can check and make sure that that, you know, works okay there. Um, and so some stuff like when you're trying to program a new study and you have to figure out kind of something critical, like how to get a reward structure you are like, uh, like say the reward structure for the mixed gamble tasks, you probably have to like uh, test parts of it in like an editor like this, just so you can see if it's giving you like the correct values that you want. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, but the way, the basic way that this works is like, um, you have to declare like your different variables by this uh, var right here. Uh, and so this is like a bunch of different uh, variables uh, for our study. So some of these aren't even for the BART task or aren't even for the Stroop task. They were either for the BART task or for the mixed gambles task. And I just didn't take them out because, you know, they're just kind of redundant. 
Um, but like uh, rounds played, like this is one uh, right here. So 32 uh, rounds played and uh, it's what it's set to. So like I could, when I tested this, I could set it for say uh, five rounds played or eight rounds or something like that. Um, yeah, and then it starts round choice equals zero. These are all variables that I started uh, like to, um, to get like the total time for congruent trials versus incongruent trials. Uh, number of red correct, blue correct. Uh, basically, uh, a lot of this stuff, I kind of, what I did when I programmed this was, I first kind of just would see if I could get different things to come on the screen, like the, you know, the choices and make them go away. And then I added in like the, the specific stuff for like, you know, the manip manipulation of congruent versus incongruent. And then I would add in the stuff that I want to save basically as like the last step. So this right here is kind of all the stuff that I'm saving, uh, which is actually uh, quite a lot. So I think uh, it starts with incongruent. So just uh, that's like one or zero. Uh, one, if it's an incongruent trial, zero. Uh, if not, uh, then their response times. Uh, I think these are just the number of like red choices that were correct and, and so on. Um, and so I created all these different variables. Uh, it looks like Aston's coming on. So try to go through this pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I created all those different uh, variables. And then this is for the, uh, the actual Stroop task. Um, so, but yeah, so that's just creating the trial numbers. And then these, uh, Let's see. Yeah, so this created like incongruent versus congruent uh, for the trial types. So trial types is like a, a vector. Oh, hey, Aston. Oh, uh, I'm just, uh, let me finish up going through this Qualtrics JavaScript uh, real quick. Um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, and then these were other labels. So like, the, all these labels were things like that, uh, like instructions. So like label header, select the font color from top to bottom. And then you'll see later, like this label header is put in basically uh, to show. So, so all of this up above kind of sets everything up. And this is more stuff just kind of setting everything up. Uh, and then um, it starts, where does it start? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, it starts at this uh, gamble message. So this uh, gamble message is really just show it's not a gamble anymore because it's a different task, but it's where it actually shows like where you can select red, blue, green or yellow. Uh, and so that's where you, you pick. And then um, <clears throat> this is like setting up what word it'll be. Um, and then this is so this is actually this up here, this gamble message is actually called when there's a new round. So this is a new round. Uh, you show all of the, the color buttons. Um, it increments the round by one. Uh, and then it starts getting like the onset time for the round so that it can like, uh, it records like the time at the beginning of it. And then when they've made all of the, the choices uh, at the end to get response time. Um, yeah, and then these are the, the different word messages. Um, this puts in the, uh, the different color of the fonts. Yeah, so all of these are different things that are going on when the round uh, starts. Um, and then, yeah, and this is where it shows gamble message. So it actually shows that gamble message we created above. Um, and then this is like, when you end the game. So this is at the end. So this is a variable that, that's called later. So it actually kind of skips around a little bit. Um, but yeah, um, collected an explosion mess. Uh, these are all messages that are used uh, later. So after the round uh, starts, it basically uh, opens, it basically doesn't end until they've selected all four of the buttons. Um, and so this is like the red button. Um, if uh, it's correct, then 
round choice is incremented by one. And whenever round choice hits like, I think three or four, then it like ends because it, it, you've selected like all four uh, options. Uh, and if they, if it's correct, then it hides the red button. Uh, if it's not, then it logs an error. Uh, and then uh, it basically doesn't hide the red button. So, you know, if the red button still uh, shows on there. Um, and then uh, if round choice is greater than or equal to four, that's when it collects the total response time because like that was the last one uh, they've selected. <clears throat> and it records all of this uh, information. Uh, so like the errors they made with the onset, what the response time was, uh, whether they selected each option correctly and the response time for like each one. Um, yeah, and then, uh, and then this is just adds to the, the total incongruent time and the total congruent uh, so that it can show them at the end, like what what the times were, and so basically it does this. Uh, so there, there's like the blue button. Uh, that's just the same thing, but for the blue button, um, and then same thing for the green button, <clears throat> and then yeah, the <clears throat> yellow button was somewhere uh, in there. And so um, if it's uh, less than the rounds played, then it goes to a new round. So it calls that new round that was way up above in the script, basically. Uh, if not, then it calls end game, which is another thing that, that was created. Um, yeah, oh, there, yeah, there's the yellow button, sorry. Um, and so that's all, That's this is all within like each, uh, each one, um, red, blue, green, and yellow. And so that's pretty much it, it goes like, yeah, I think this actually, this is redundant from the last one. Um, and then at the end game uh, up here, it basically pushes all of the data that we collected uh, into the, the Qualtrics uh, survey engine. So, so yeah, so I'll, I'll edit like this section out and like post it on YouTube, but that's kind of like just a brief, you know, summary of what happens and then you just click you click save and if there's an error it like won't let you save it basically so sometimes when there's been an error i've had to like copy stuff into that online javascript editor to tell me where the editor is, the error is because in the qualtrics editor it doesn't like tell you like where the error was like in what line which is not very helpful at all so yeah so with that end game, if they like something happened, like if there's a blip halfway through, would there not be any data saved? Or is that like a trial right. by trial save? Okay. Yeah, it actually wouldn't save unless they made it all the way to the, the end because it doesn't push the data okay. uh, until the end. Yeah. So for running that, if that happened, would we let them start over like if the internet like disconnected or something like will we let them start over would they not would they then be like tainted and they should um that. well if, you know we'd probably just like let them start over if there's time okay. but make a note of possible data contamination okay. uh you know that Very we might good. throw it out later yeah, yeah.